Aspirin is a commonly prescribed drug in pregnancy to prevent or delay the onset of preeclampsia and there are specific indications related to its use. Hi and welcome to the channel Love Obstetrics and Gynecology. This video is related to the use of drug aspirin in pregnancy. Firstly, what is aspirin? Aspirin falls under the category of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and it is a cyclooxygenase inhibitor with anti-inflammatory and antiplatelet properties. Regarding the safety of aspirin in pregnancy, well, aspirin in a lower dose is recommended by FDA to be safe in pregnancy. The mechanism of action of aspirin depends upon the dosage being given. At a higher dose, it acts as both COX-1 and a COX-2 inhibitor, whereas at a lower dose, it acts as only COX-1 inhibitor. The COX-1 enzyme is responsible for thromboxane A2 production which is a vasoconstrictor and COX-2 is responsible for prostacycline production which is a vasodilator. So at a lower dose it inhibits only COX-1 that is the production of thromboxane A2 the vasoconstricting substance is inhibited and hence a better placental perfusion is done by the prostocycline which is not inhibited in case of a low dose aspirin. A low dose aspirin that is 81 mg per day is recommended by FDA to be safe in pregnancy. While considering the safety in pregnancy, we consider two aspects, maternal aspect and a fetal aspect. In the maternal aspect, there is no increased in tendency of placental abruption or a postpartum hemorrhage. These are some bleeding tendencies that occur in pregnancy. So there is no such increased incidence of placental abruption or postpartum hemorrhage. And considering the fetal aspect in the first trimester if we say there is no increased risk of any congenital anomalies and if we come in the third trimester there is no increased uh, risk of early ductus arteriosus closure which is seen with other non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Aspirin is indicated as per the patient's preclinical risk assessment. So this preclinical risk assessment basically divides the patient's risk factors into a category of a high, moderate and low risk factor. The presence of a single high risk factor is enough for the indication of aspirin in pregnancy. For a moderate risk factor, you require one more than one of those moderate risk factors to use the aspirin. And in the low category, we do not use the aspirin. So regarding the high risk factor, what are those, what are those high risk factors where aspirin is indicated? First, the history of preeclampsia in a prior pregnancy especially that was associated with adverse outcome that is the patient had a FGR baby or intrauterine demise. Next comes up if the patient has some diseases such as chronic hypertension, renal disease or type 1 or type 2 diabetic mellitus or autoimmune diseases such as SLE or antiphospholipid antibody syndrome. Or in this current pregnancy, she is having a multifetal gestation. So all of these are high risk factors. Next, coming on to the moderate risk factors. These include nulliparity, obesity, age more than 35, a family history of preeclampsia or a personal history of such as uh, low birth weight. So all the, of these are moderate risk factors and more, more than one of these should be present to use aspirin in pregnancy. We prescribe the aspirin in late first trimester or you can say from 12 weeks onward through 28 weeks. From 12 weeks to 28 weeks is a period from where you can start the patient on aspirin. But ideally it should be before 16 weeks to have optimal result and delay or prevent the onset of preeclampsia. The aspirin is contraindicated in patients uh, if they are allergic to aspirin or they are hypersensitive to non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs or uh, relative contraindications you can say if she is having a GI bleed episodes or genitourinary bleed or she may be having some active peptic ulcer disease. So these are some contraindications to the use of aspirin in pregnancy. The 
Aspirin is not indicated in case she had just a prior history of stillbirth or a prior history of preterm birth or a FGR baby that was not associated with preeclampsia. That is a lone presence of a spontaneous preterm birth. You do not give these patients aspirin. And also aspirin is not indicated in case of an early pregnancy loss. So this was all regarding the use of aspirin in pregnancy. If you like my video, please do like, subscribe and share the channel Love Obstetrics and Gynecology. Thanks for watching.